Ancient and medieval doctors thought the stomach, not the heart or the brain, was the most important part of the body. But they really didn't know how the digestive system worked. Today, we have lots of different ways to learn about the digestive system, and you might be surprised that one of them involves cows. Hey, buddy. Associate Professor Gwynya In Shibisa and his team take care of these very special cows. Learning about nutrition for cattle is important because we can determine what those requirements are, and then once we know what those requirements are, then we can try to make sure that we formulate diets that are appropriate for those animals. Cows are ruminants, as are other animals like elk, sheep, and goats. They have four stomach compartments. When they eat, the plant materials are swallowed and then held in the first and second compartments, where bacteria and other microorganisms start breaking down the food. The first compartment is called the rumen, and the second is the reticulum. Generally, when the animal's resting, they bring the contents back up into their mouths. This is called cud. Ruminants then chew the cud again, breaking it down into a finer mush. The food is then swallowed and then moved into the first and second compartments for more digestion. Next, the food moves into the third chamber, or the oseum, where water is taken out. The oseum is kind of like a sieve. It filters and sends back to the rumen those particles that are too big for further breakdown. Finally, what's left moves into the fourth compartment, called the abyssaeum, where digestion is completed. And so when we study what happens from that true stomach, or the fourth stomach, all the way to what comes out of the end, uh, all, everything that happens in cattle is exactly the same as what happens in humans. To test the impact of different types of diets on the nutrient supply, production performance, and health of these animals, Chibisa uses cannulated cows. These cows have surgically fitted cannula. It's put in place after a hole is made in their first stomach. It doesn't really bother the cow, and these animals live a normal life, except they get really good medical care and their food intake is carefully studied. And so to just open the blogs, we just uh, press inside. Okay, then the plug goes in and then we just grab it. And at this point we have access right into the rumen. Uh, and so as you can see, uh, we already have digesta in there. So this is stuff they have been eating uh, all morning. During the digestive process, the stomach contents begin to ferment. Microbes digest the fibers and some get converted into volatile fatty acids or VFA. VFA is eventually absorbed into the bloodstream and are used as a source of energy. So those cannulas, they're really important for us because it enables us to collect samples and then we use those samples to do research. That ability to obtain samples is really good because then once we feed them something, then we can determine how much of that is digested, how much disappears, which then is important in terms of um, knowing the nutritional value of different feeds that we have. Chibisa collects some material from the cow's stomach to test for those VFAs. And so if you collect a sample, then you can determine the pH in the rumen, which then can tell you what's happening in terms of digestion in there. So at this point, we can just close uh, the, the cannula itself. So essentially, we just put it in place, and then we just push it inwards, and it's closed after that. Chibisa heads into the back to extract the liquid in the sample. So we use really low-tech stuff for that, your normal cheesecloth. That's what we use to filter uh, to obtain the sambo. So uh, right in there, I have a small little cup to collect the sambo. I have my funnel, and then I just place uh, the cheesecloth over, and then I just try to squeeze as much fluid as I can to obtain uh, the sambo we're going to use today. And so I just place a little bit in there. Let's see. And then once I have everything in there, I then just grab the ends and then squeeze. So as you can see, the juice is green in color, which is not surprising because they've been eating grass all morning. And so the color of what you get is determined by what's in their diet. And so at this point, uh, we have uh, the sambo ready. He takes the sample and tests for the pH level. And it's about right for as long as the food has been in the cow's stomach. Next, you'll take the liquid to study the microbes that are found in the sample. So in terms of cattle nutrition, uh, there's still a lot to learn. In the rumen, we have a lot of microbes in there, and we are still at a point where we don't really know uh, what some of those microbes do. Chibiso thinks if they can learn the best way to feed the microbes, they'll have found the best way to feed the cow. And understanding microbes in the digestive system isn't just for cows. 
in human nutrition. We now know that uh, the microbial makeup in our gut uh, influences our mood, for example. Chabisa's research is important because its impact is more than just learning what to feed cows. We also have to worry about the environment because what we feed, which then can have an impact in terms of our climate, for example. Uh, as humans, we always need to have food, and as long as we need to eat to live, then that means that you know we always have to raise animals, we always have to have uh, crop production as well. There's a whole world of you know science that's related to crop production uh, and animal production, and my encouragement is, yeah, we need to have more people come into the field because uh, there's a lot we still don't know, and uh, there's a lot we can do better. If you want to learn more, head to the Science Trek website. You'll find facts, links, games, material for educators and parents, and much more. You'll find it all at sciencetrek.org.